What's up, Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another audiobook. Now, I am so, so excited for this one. This is Lally's Game. Yes, Tales from the Pizzaplex number one is finally out. This is crazy. Uh, I cannot believe that we are already here, and I am so, so excited for this book. Um, so we're going to be reading the first story today, which is Lally's Game. Obviously, I haven't read it before, so you're going to get my full reactions um, along with uh, a little read through, so I'll be talking a little bit in between, but uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Make sure you subscribe so you see when the other uh, other parts come out, uh, and yeah, let's get straight into this. <clears throat> uh, Selena gripped her black umbrella tightly as she awaited the 52 bus in the storm. She couldn't wait to get back home to her fiancé and put her feet up. The stench of smoke from the man on the bench drifted her way, reminding her of her father when she was young. He wasn't a terrible father, at least for a few years. When Selina was only four years old, he had left the family, and it changed Selina. She knew it was best. It, it was for the best anyway. She watched as her bus approached and stepped on w without looking back at the man. Okay. Selina turned the corner into the neighbourhood to find her small but cosy house. The gate opened to a small pathway surrounded by white hydrangeas, is that how you say it, which led to the bright red door of the bungalow. She thought it was magical, like the gateway into heaven or the parting of the Red Sea. Her fiancé Jeremy thought the red door was a little too much. Selina could see why, but nevertheless, she liked it. The warm light in the living room glowed through the window curtains and it made Selina feel cosy at an instant, despite still being outside in the rain. She opened the gate to a deafening screech. Jeremy and Selina always know from the sound when somebody is coming up to the front door. Closing the gate behind her, she looked across the street to the other houses. They were all uh, similar houses, but each one was unique. <clears throat> there was a front yard with an inflatable swimming pool for kids, the grass patchy and tainted brown. Adjacent to them was a house that had once been white, but clearly had the paint stripped off. Now the walls were a murky mix of grey and brown. A couple of houses down had a front yard storing a broken washing machine and a table on its side. Selina watched as the box of machinery was struck by piercing droplets of rain. The houses were all so different in appearance, but they, e uh, uh, they all had one similarity. They were all dull. Each and every one of them looked damaged and unloved. Selina's house was her dream wonderland, but the rest of the neighbourhood felt like a nightmarish wasteland. Selina took her hands off of the gate and turned towards her luminous red door. Okay, I see, I kind of see what this is like. Selina's house is very different to the rest of the... Uh, the neighbourhood. That's interesting. Um, kind of shows the contrast. Uh, honey, I'm home, Selina called, closing the door behind her and taking off her trench coat. I heard the gate, dear. Jeremy walked through the corridor in his black suit pants and white skirt, uh, skirt and white shirt, kissing Selina on the forehead. We need to get rid of that horrible sound at some point. Jeremy was Prince Charming in Selina's eyes, a tall, slim body, pristine blue eyes and pale skin, and his selflessness. He always made Selina smile and cheered her up when she felt upset. On her birthday last year, Jeremy proposed to her with a surprise meal at an expensive restaurant, and she said yes in an instant, and now Selina couldn't be any happier. You look happy today. Selina, with her feet resting on the stool, watched as Jeremy threw more logs on the fire. Well, I did all the washing up, and I cleaned the house. I guess everything being tidy makes me feel good about myself. That's great. Selina picked up the newspaper on the table next to her, and opened it to the page with the crosswords. Are you sure you're not happy for another reason? Well, I guess I'm slightly happier now I'm not at home alone. Jeremy was teasing her. I also finally got that job. Selina jumped out of her seat in excitement and wrapped her arms around Jeremy's torso. I knew you'd get it. I'm so happy for you. Selina seemed more excited than Jeremy himself. Thanks, sweetheart. I start on Monday. It'll be my first job in over a year. That made Jeremy a little nervous. You're going to do great, my love. I hope so. 
the last time I worked at a pizza place, oh no, uh, it, the last time I worked at a pizza place, it was full of arcade machines. I had to peel pepperoni slices off of the screens and wipe the pizza sauce on the joysticks. I don't know how kids managed to make such a mess. Trust me, I know. Selena worked as an elementary school teacher. I never knew a five-year-old could produce so much vomit. You should see the two-year-olds. <laughs> two-year-olds at a pizza place? Uh, is that why you left your job? Jeremy worked as a janitor years before he and Selena met. I didn't exactly leave, the places were shut down. We weren't told why. I came to the pizzeria for a late shift one day and the rooms were empty. The lights were dim and the place was trashed. I walked inside and my boss came to meet me. He explained it would be my last day and that I wouldn't get the paycheck for the month. I was told that instead I could take an arcade machine, so that's what I did. Sure, the job was a little frustrating at times, but I did enjoy it. That's why I applied for this new place. You have an old mo <laughs> Wait, it says Freddy's. Oh no. You have an old arcade machine from Freddy's? Selena went to Freddy's with her parents all the time, until her father left. I like this, you know, because like, it's not directly Pizzaplex related. Like, it's it's not necessarily, um, what's, what am I, what am I, how am I trying to explain this? It's not directly connected to security breach, but it kind of, I guess, is going to have some connections later on, like, law-wise. It's not going to be like, I was at a Pizzaplex. I beat Music Man or something. It's <laughs> it's gonna be like connected loosely, you know? And I like that. I like I like how it's very loose at the moment. Like it was with Fazbear Frights um, a little bit in some stories. Um, it's at my parents' house. I never played it. We could probably sell it with hundreds of other things in that attic for a little more wedding cash. Well, don't you at least wanna play it first? We can bring it over at the weekend if you'd like. Jeremy seemed a little hesitant. I'm sure it won't work though, the thing is probably decades old. It's at least worth a try. Selena was very excited. Yeah, it's gonna be something to do with the arcade. It could be like a Princess Quest, uh, Balloon Boy World kind of story this. That would be very cool. It is called Lally's Game. Hmm. Um, it had been a long day at work, but thankfully it was the last one until the weekend. Selena left the school's front doors doing up the buttons on her coat and opening her umbrella. When would the storm stop? Dodging the puddles in small dips of the sidewalk, Selina jogged along the, road, uh, to, along the road to the nearest bus stop. Sat on the bench again, the smoking man turned to face Selina under his grey hoodie before quickly turning back. She could make out a long beard and large sunglasses. Were they sunglasses? It's not even sunny today. Selina sat on the opposite end of the bench, making a conscious decision not to look back at the man. She didn't know why, but she felt as though she was being watched. It was an uneasy feeling, and one that she believed to stem from the man on the other end of the bench. She finally looked, uh, she finally looked up to see her bus pull into the stop. With her head down, she stepped on quickly and awaited her arrival home. The gate made its distinct screeching sound that supposedly reverberated across the entire neighbourhood. Closing the gate, Selina looked back to the houses she observed yesterday. The kiddie pool was overflowing with rainwater. The house next door had even less paint than before. The table was gone from the other house and the washing machine seemed more crumpled in the rainfall. Selina turned back and checked her front yard. Still beautiful. So, I know that you said we would get the arcade machine at the weekend, but while you were at work, I couldn't resist. Good evening to you too, my love, Selena interrupted and kissed Jeremy on the cheek. She walked into the living room to find a damaged arcade machine, its screen reflecting the orange light of the fire, almost perpendicular to it. It towered over the couch. What once was bright and blue in colour was now a murky blue and brown. The sides were dented in multiple places and the controls felt stiff. Above the screen was a black sign with faded text, uh, faded white text saying Lally's Game and on both sides of the machine was a strange image of a robot child with a white stripe down its body. Okay, that explains the title and the cover. <laughs> um, well, 
I wasn't expecting this. Selena stared at the dented box that had been placed in the middle of the living room. What were you expecting? I don't know. Pac-Man? Space Invaders? I've never heard of a Lally's game before. It's a little nostalgic to me. I think it's a puzzle game with some action elements. Jeremy couldn't quite remember the specifics. Who's the alien child? I guess that's Lally. Or maybe Lally is the person behind the game? It isn't really clear. I must have seen him in one of my nightmares before. Well, do you want to play it or not? Jeremy bent over behind the machine and flicked a switch. The screen flashed before loading a title card saying Lally's Game in a bubble font on a black background. There was an eerie music box chime playing and some white text flashed insert coin to play. Selena felt uncomfortable. What's wrong? Jeremy could see right through Selena. Do you not want to play it? I like where this is going. <laughs> this is this seems very law relevant. Um, no, I do. This is just a little weird. She couldn't exactly put a finger on what was stopping her. Jeremy handed her a coin and she reluctantly inserted it into the coin slot. She looked down at the buttons that were used to control the game. She took out her index finger and pushed down on the start button. The screen faded to black and the chime stopped. In silence, Selena and Jeremy stood and stared blankly, waiting for something to happen. It must be busted, Selena said after a short while. That's a shame, you were so excited to play. Jeremy was trying to cheer up Selena, but for the first time, it had failed. She didn't feel right. Actually, Jeremy, I was going to mention before we did this. Whoa, Selena, look! Jeremy cut her off and pointed past her shoulder. Selena turned back and looked at the screen. In an instant, she felt an intense wave of paranoia. Isn't that amazing? Eh, amazing. Isn't that amazing? It works. Jeremy couldn't see what Selena could. She rushed backwards into Jeremy's arms and planted her face into his chest. What's wrong, dear? Selena didn't look up at Jeremy to speak to him. Look at the screen! Jeremy looked at the black screen with the text, Welcome to my game, Selena. What's wrong with that? It's welcoming you to the game. How does it know my name? Oh yeah, true. <laughs> Selena cried into uh, Jeremy's chest. Oh, I... I suppose I don't know. Jeremy understood why that shocked Selena. She got up and looked into Jeremy's eyes angrily. Was this you? This isn't very funny, Jeremy. I swear it wasn't me. I haven't touched the machine except for when I bought it into the house. Selena ran out into the kitchen. Get that machine out. Throw it outside. Put it in the attic. I don't care what you do with it as long as it's nowhere near me. Jeremy decided to move it into the attic until they could fully decide what to do with it. Interesting, okay. Um, at work on a Monday morning, Selena felt a little sick. Working in elementary school, the kids reminded her of the strange robot child on the side of the arcade machine. She didn't ever want to see the machine again. After a long day, she realised that Jeremy wouldn't be home when she returned. It was his first night of his new pizzeria job. She hoped it would go well for him. The storm was getting worse every day. Even with an umbrella and a trench coat, Selena always ended up dripping wet by the time she got home. Approaching the bus stop, she saw that the man was there once again. She wondered if he had ever moved from his spot or if it is just a coincidence that he is there whenever Selena is. You a teacher? The man asked under his breath, with a gravelly deep voice. Selena wasn't too sure if she should respond and wasn't sure what she would say if she wanted to. I know you. Chills went down Selena's spine. You don't? Selena knew that somehow that was a lie. I do. I see you every day. In about three minutes, the 52 is going to arrive and you're going to get on it without looking back at me. You're a creep. You don't know who I am. And you don't know who I am, Selena stood, facing the man as he slumped on the bench with his huge grey beard and reflective sunglasses. I know exactly who you are. I'm sure you do watching me and probably following me around. She looked down at his hands. They looked purple. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you, <laughs> you know it's bad when it says purple in a uh, 
in a FNAF book. Ah, <laughs> uh, that'd be... <laughs> Uh, I can also see the word zombie here. Oh no. Um, Selena couldn't tell if it was because of the cold or if it was a bruise of some sort, but the man looked like a zombie. Your name is Selena. The man stood up. Selena's em entire body shivered. How does everyone and everything know Selena's name? She looked past the man's shoulder to see the bus pulling into the stop. Seeing as you're so eager to find out everything about me, why don't I find out everything about you? The man sighed, and you could see his breath as it condensed in the cold air. He reached up with his huge zombie hands and grabbed his sunglasses. He revealed his face to Selena. Dad? I mean, every <laughs> we all knew that was coming. That wasn't a big reveal. Uh, Selena's heart uh, was... <laughs> Selena's heart was racing. Selena Hart was racing. Wow. More spelling mistakes in these books. God damn it. <laughs> um, it's good to see you again, daughter. Get away from me. I never want to see your face again. Selena caught the bus, leaving her father staring at her as it drove away. Okay. When she got off the bus, her legs felt like jello. She couldn't wait to arrive home to Jeremy and a cosy fire. Selina found her way into her neighbourhood. Outside one of the houses, there looked to be a child in the kiddie pool, completely still. Why is there a child in the pool when there's a storm? Theory. <laughs> uh, sorry I keep interrupting, but like... Th there's this supposed storm going on, but... Selena's dad is wearing sunglasses and there's a child in a pool. Is it possible that <laughs> Selena is the only one that sees the storm? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Probably not. <laughs> that would be a weird theory, but uh, that, that would have been, I, I don't know. That would have been cool. Uh, where was, where was I? Uh, their neighbour had no paint left on the walls. Across the street, what used to be a washing machine is now a pile of scrapped metal. As Selina opened her gate, she looked to her front yard. She couldn't tell why, but it looked less colourful than last week. Honey, I'm home, she called out as she opened the door. She looked in her letterbox to find today's newspaper, which reminded Selina that Jeremy is out for work. Alone. She cooked some dinner, lit the fire, and watched some television while solving the daily crossword puzzle. Hours had passed, and she felt lonely. It was the first time in so long that she spent the evening alone. It just hit her that, that Selena and Jeremy wouldn't be seeing each other very often anymore. She didn't know why, but that made her feel inclined to go into the attic. Ooh, Fazgu clone in the attic. <laughs> Bringing a flashlight, she opened the door to the attic and realised that something in there was already creating light. Intrigued, she discovered the source of the light was the arcade machine, lying on its side at the back of the attic. How is it even being powered? The screen still read the sentence, Welcome to my game, Selina. The phrase still scared her, but she felt a little more comfortable with it than she did before. She grabbed the machine and turned it back upright. She pressed the start button. Suddenly a wave of colours filled the screen, lighting up the whole attic. The game had a pixelated robot alien child, like the one on the side of the machine. Or as I call it, the PS5 child. And it was Selena's job to solve the puzzles as the child to escape a building. Selena enjoyed controlling the robot in the game. Wait, 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 wait. Solving puzzles as the child to escape a building. The child is a robot child. What does it say that? Pixelated robot alien child. This is 100% a uh, <laughs> Gregory parallel, let me just say. This is definitely a Gregory par parallel. Oh my god. Th this already has like a lot more connections than I thought it would have. Anyway. Selena enjoyed controlling the robot in the game. Okay. She liked puzzle games like crosswords and puzzle solving. Uh, oh, sorry, problem solving. A few minutes into the game, she came across a clue that said, find the coin in the kitchen. 
Selena couldn't find a kitchen in the game. Maybe the game meant her actual kitchen. Why would an arcade game require you to do things in the real world? It was exciting to Selena when she went into the kitchen and found the exact coin she needed on the table. She likes puzzles the most because they are satisfying to solve. She inserted the coin through the coin slot and it made Selena a little less lonely. Okay, the way I see this is like interaction between the digital world and the real world, kind of glitch trap, princess quest, Cassidy kind of parallels there, I guess you could call it. Maybe telling us a little bit about the uh, mechanics of the Five Nights at Freddy's world. Uh, all she could think about at work was getting home and completing more of Lally's game. Uh, however, she would need to get past her father first. Selena got to the bus stop and sat down. Listen, Selena, I know you hate me, and I know we won't see eye to eye. So stop talking to me. I am your father. So where have you been? I was four when you left. We were a happy family. I know, but it's been over 20 years. I've been to school. I've been to college. I got a job and a fiancé, and only now are you here on a little bus stop bench trying to apologise your way back into my life. It's not going to happen. Selena, go to hell. Jesus. <laughs> wow. Uh, Selena wasn't sure if it was real or not, but it looked like his skin became more purple. For God's sake. I hate these books. <laughs> um, Selena was back to the arcade machine. And the next clue she found said, steal the pool kid's coin. Okay. Selena knew exactly where this clue was hidden, so she made her way over to the house with the kiddie pool. Still sat completely still. A child uh, with pale skin and curly black hair was neck deep in a pool of freezing cold rainwater. Luckily, he was holding a coin. Uh, Selena forced open the child's stiff fingers, grabbed the coin and ran back to her house, inserting the coin and feeling a little more satisfied. Eager to play on, the next message said, In the eye of your father. Selena thought this one would be easy to do. Is Selena, uh, Selena, is Selena like corrupted? Is Selena like freaking um, hypnotized to do all these things? Oh, wow, okay. I get it, I get it. This is to do with Princess Quest and Vanessa. Um, with her bloody hands, Selena opened the gate of her home, still with a deafening screech. A screech that sounded just like him when she pulled out his eye. Oh my god. Oh no. That's horrible imagery. Uh, his skin went a deep purple as he collapsed to the floor. But all that worries now is getting the next part of the game done, of course. Uh, Selena cut open the eyeball of her father to discover another coin. She inserted the coin into the machine and felt more content with herself. That gives me chills. Um, the game continued until suddenly, Selena could hear the sound of the gate opening. It wasn't time for Jeremy to come home yet. Who could it be? Selena felt relaxed, but also slightly paranoid. She went down to her living room and looked out the window. There was a cloaked figure tall and woman-like. Selena opened the front door. It was Springtrap, and he came over for some dinner. My son just died because someone took out his eyeballs. I thought I deserved a lovely dinner at your place. Springtrap was a killer, but Selena didn't mind. Absolutely, come in, I'll put the fire on. Fire? Where? No! Please, no! Springtrap ran as far away as he could. Wow, this is getting a little bit intense, really. I don't see any connections to anything Five Nights at Freddy's here. But, um, you know, it's getting intense. It's getting intense. Uh, wow. Um, Selena kept playing the game, and there was some kind of plot to do with a princess and an old man. What does that have to do with anything? Selena exclaimed. I have absolutely no idea, Ozone replied. At this instant, she heard the front gate again and opened the door to find Springtrap and all of his friends. I'm sorry for leaving, Selina. I brought some friends this time. <laughs> I always come back. <laughs> um, hello? 
Balloon Boy's voice reverberated through Selena's house. Sup, brother? The Stitch Wraith, an urban legend, had a huge grin on his face. Well, come in, Selena said. She witnessed some other spring traps entering the house. Who are they? They are my brothers, Selena, Springtrap replied. There's Scrap Trap, Glitch Trap, Burn Trap, Flaming Spring Trap, Clown Spring Trap, uh, Toxic Spring Trap, and Curse. We bully him because he doesn't have trap in his name. Excellent, Selena said, feeling less lonely. Well, that's going to conclude the first part of this audiobook. If you want to um, listen to the second part, make sure you subscribe. Um, but yeah, other than that, this has been good so far. I'm ready to uh, finish off the story soon. And I'll see you then.